Straight ahead on CCX News, a focus on fitness will take you to Maple Grove where fitness boutiques are booming. Plus, we head to Robbinsdale where a Lego robotics team is focused on winning a statewide competition. And later, fighting fraud will show you a way to protect yourself from would-be scammers. CCX News starts right now. Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining us. A crystal man accused in the beating death of a two-year-old boy made his first court appearance today. And meanwhile, officials have identified the two-year-old as Joshua Lockhart, Jr. The medical examiner's office says Lockhart suffered blunt force injuries. On Saturday night, police were called to his home in Crystal, where they found the child unconscious. Another woman who lives in the home told police that his mother's boyfriend had been beating the child since they moved in this past December. Today, that man, 21-year-old Curran Mitchell, made his initial court appearance on a charge of second-degree murder. Bail was set at $700,000. If convicted, Mitchell could face up to 40 years in prison. Authorities have released the name of the woman found murdered inside a Brooklyn Center hotel room. Allie Campbell of St. Cloud was found shot to death on Saturday night. Campbell was 18 years old. According to her obituary, Campbell is remembered for her infectious smile and for always wanting people around her to be happy. As we told you yesterday, five of six suspects initially arrested have been released from custody, although they could be charged at a later date. Charges are now filed in a fatal hit and run case in Brooklyn Park. A man was struck Saturday, February 4th at the intersection of Brooklyn Boulevard and Kentucky Avenue North. According to the criminal complaint, witnesses heard screeching tires and saw a man propelled into the air. The victim later died. He is identified as 50 year old John Ingram of Brooklyn Park. Charged in the case is 30 year old Ahmed Hassan of Brooklyn Center. The complaint says Hassan was an Amazon delivery driver and had a pickup in Maple Grove. Hassan later told police he was not feeling well and had not taken his prescribed insulin and that he did not know what he hit. After the accident, Hassan drove to Brooklyn Center and called police about an hour later to turn himself in. Plymouth is taking a close look at a proposed hotel lodging tax, but no decision is likely before June. The state allows cities to use a lodging tax to raise money for tourism marketing. It would take state approval to be used for other things like tourism facilities. At a public hearing on Tuesday night, the idea got support from a developer who is building two hotels in Plymouth. He said he's in favor of it if it's used for promotion and not for capital improvements. While Plymouth studies the tax, they're also watching any changes that may be made by the legislature. Um, if we wanted to at some point do something different outside of promoting, we'd have to get special legislation for that. So at last night's public hearing, that was brought up as an item uh, looking at the legislature. Don't know that that would be the case, but we want to look at all of our options, so we're doing this in a very thoughtful way. And no decision has been made to go forward. Mayor Kelly Slavic says the issue could go to the city council after the legislative session ends. A manufacturer in Plymouth is planning a major expansion. Daikin Applied plans to add on to its 12-acre campus with new testing facilities and a new training center. The expansion would add enough space for 90 additional employees. Daikin makes heating and air conditioning systems for customers around the world. The company last expanded in 2008, building a state-of-the-art research and development center. When it comes to places where you can work up a sweat, boutique <laughs> fitness studios are growing in popularity nationwide. And the smaller studios tend to offer a more focused workout. In Maple Grove, several have opened within the last year, and the city is happy to see it. Maple Grove's newest fitness studio. And please, and it's all about improving strength, increasing flexibility, and building endurance. Five, six, seven, eight. Pure Bar is a 55 minute workout. We work every muscle of the body and then we stretch everything out. Um, we use tiny isometric movements to really build and tone, sculpt the muscles. 
Pure Bar opened its doors along Main Street in early December. It's the latest of four boutique fitness studios to open in Maple Grove. In the past year, Surge Cycling, Fit Body Boot Camp, and Club Pilates have all come on the scene, boosting Maple Grove's number of workout facilities to around two dozen. Not only do we have a lot of restaurants, service businesses, but now we can add fitness studios as well. It's just one more thing that we can talk about when we tell the story of Maple Grove. The boutique fitness studios, which tend to occupy smaller spaces, are a point of pride for the city in the variety that they offer. Being there a more niche, more boutique experience, they're not on every corner, so it may bring in a new set of visitors that want to experience that experience, but then they also can see what else Maple Grove has to offer. Can you see this Back at Pure Bar, owner Andrea Hartnack opened the franchise because she was a big fan. I fell in love with bar after I had my second daughter, and I loved the workout so much I became kind of an addict. Now she's introducing it to runner Cassie Griel. I'm just trying to tighten and tone. Cassie appreciates the focused strength and flexibility training, but also the smaller workout setting that's helping to make boutique studios popular. When you know the instructors and know people in your class, you tend to come more. Maple Grove will have one more health club too when an Anytime Fitness location has its grand opening Monday on Wedgwood Lane. A way to get fit and enjoy the outdoors is entering a new phase in Plymouth. Phase three of the Northwest Greenway Trail construction begins this spring. The $1.2 million project includes reconstructing the boardwalk on the north end of the Elm Creek wetland. It also includes adding a connection south of the new Aspen Hollow housing development, which will then link to the Plymouth Dog Park to the north. Then to the east, phase three includes a connection to Camelot Park and the Bayesian Golf Course development and includes reconstructing the Cheshire Parkway boardwalk by the Trillium Woods Senior Living Complex. Construction of phase three would be complete in October. Now to a high-tech feat by students at a Robbinsdale school. The Lego robotics team from Sacred Heart Catholic School is headed to the state tournament. Reporter Sonia Goins shows us their remarkable robot. This is the EV3. Students have been working on this Lego robot since August. It started out as a simple computer and developed into something much more. We have four different sensor ports and they have two touch sensors. The 10 member group designed, built and programmed the robot. I think it's fun that we get to program and put together and problem solve different missions. The robot has four motors and several cool features including a conveyor belt. The conveyor is used to drop off the bee on the top of the beehive, which is one of the missions. The team also designed an unusual attachment system. This will come in handy during the competition. The group will only have two and a half minutes to complete each task. I think the best thing we have is the gravity attachment because it's easy to put in and it doesn't take as much time. Also, the judges have complimented on us and we've won design awards because of it. During the competition, the robot will be judged on mechanical design, programming and strategy. And students will get points for how well they work together as a team. I mean, the effort that these kids put in is, is really impressive. and. It, you know, they were lucky enough to, to execute when the, when the day came. The group is excited to compete against 60 other teams from around the state. It's really cool that we made it this far. I'm actually surprised. I've never made it this far before, so I think it's really cool. In Robbinsdale, Sonia Goins, CCX News. The state tournament is coming up Saturday, February 25th at Washington Technology Magnet School in St. Paul. Coming up, the best ways to fight fraud. Shannon Slatten has tips next in Money Savers. Then later in sports, top-ranked Champlin Park shoots for another win in boys basketball. But first, warming up on Thursday, then on Friday, temperatures approach 60 degrees. a startling statistic. AARP says one person is the victim of identity theft every three seconds. Well, you've probably had a phone call or email from a scammer yourself. And today in Money Savers, reporter Shannon Slatton has some ways to protect yourself from would-be scammers. Money, money, money. 
And they started out and said, we're the IRS. When it comes to scams, seniors like Norman Nelson can tell you about a few. I get a call and said, this is the IRS. We've issued a warrant for your arrest. Yes, Norman shared his story about a phone call from a scammer. And I just said, well, send him right over. I'll be waiting for him and hung up because I knew it was all fraud. Yeah. <laughs> so raise your hand if you've been targeted by a scam. And nearly everyone raised their hand during this session on fighting fraud. When it comes to older adults being victimized, it's not so much about cognitive decline or memory loss. It's more about con artists targeting older adults because that's where the money is. Jay Hoppala with AARP says senior Seniors have savings and scammers want access to them. There's a lot of misinformation that we hear about how we should be scared about identity theft, but really there are simple things we can do to protect ourselves. Jay recommends three strategies to reduce your liability for identity theft. First, monitor your financial accounts. Secondly, monitor your credit report. And finally, keep your money in the banking system where it is federally protected. And then if they notice anything that doesn't seem right, like a transaction that they didn't make, they should report it to their financial financial institution and our consumer protections in the United States are going to make sure that they don't lose that money. You can also educate yourself. Sign up for AARP's free Fraud Watch Network to keep up with current trends and learn how to stay vigilant. Identity theft and consumer fraud are the most frequently attempted crimes in Minnesota every single day. In Crystal, Shannon Slatten, CCX News. They, they weren't and here's another tip. A tip for checking your credit report is to never pay for it. You can access your credit report Report for free on annualcreditreport.com. Well, coming up, talented artists from area high schools putting their best work on display. But first, the Maple Grove girls hockey team battles Centennial in a section semifinal game. John Jacobson has that and much more coming up next in sports. I'm John Jacobs, it was Sports. Maple Grove's girls hockey team is looking to make it back to the state tournament for a second year in a row. The Crimson is now one step closer. Maple Grove facing Centennial in the 5AA semifinals. 22 seconds into the game, Taylor Wente to Maya Martinez. She finishes, and it's a 1-0 Crimson lead. Later in the first, Gabby Hughes walks out of the corner and snaps home a shot for the Cougars, leveling the score at 1. But Maple Grove gets two more in the period. A nice pass by Sydney Hansen. Aaron Roll chips it in. Crimson up three to one after one. Second period, Tina Campa's wrist shot from the point finds its way through for a power play goal and a 4-1 Maple Grove lead. But Centennial fights back and with 65 seconds left in the third, Shannon Meany bangs in the rebound, cutting the MG lead to four to three. The Crimson get it right back. Wente chases down the loose pucker, centering pass to flex off a defenseman and in for a goal, sending Maple Grove to the section final with a 5-3 win. Centennial is a great team, and um, Gabby and Annika, we had to keep an eye on them. So uh, they were super aggressive, and pretty much the whole third period they were in our zone. So we had to play a really good defensive zone and get our man and uh, just give it 110%. Like, we left everything on the ice, so I'm so proud of my team. Maple Grove now meets Blaine in the Section 5AA Final. The team's tied 1-1 on February 4th. A game is Friday at 7 o'clock at Roseville Ice Arena. In Section 5A, both Breck and Blake won their semifinal games Tuesday night. So these two rivals will face off in the Section Final for a 10th straight year. That's Thursday night at 7.30 at Parade Ice Garden. Maple Grove boys are also having a strong season. They hope to get a season split against third-ranked Elk River in the Elks home rink. Elk River strikes early. The first shot is stopped, but Benton Moss from the high slot snaps it high on the glove side for a goal 47 seconds into the game. It stays 1-0 until very late in the game. With their goalie pulled, Sam Huff slides the pass across to Ryan Brandt. He scores through a screen. Maple Grove ties it with 1.14 to play. Looks like overtime is coming. But Elk Rivers, Nick Perbex tips the puck past the defenseman to create a two-on-one. Perbex takes it himself and scores with 27 seconds left to give Elk River a two-to-one win and the Northwest Suburban Conference's North title. 
Champlain Park's boys basketball team is still carrying an unbeaten record into play this week. Senior Theo John on the Rebels hosting Blaine in a Northwest Suburban Conference North game. Byron Bynum, great job of keeping his balance here for Blaine and dishes off a pass to Timothy Leo for the hoop and an 11-4 Bengals lead. The Rebels answer. Bennett Otto passes ahead to McKinley Wright who hits a pull-up jumper for two of his 21 points. And it's John on the baseline hitting for two. He scores 16 points in the game. Champlain Park begins to take over against the Bengals. Off of Blaine, inbound pass. Wright swipes down the ball for a steal. Gets down court in a hurry and this is a nice pass to Sam Dubois from the layup. That caps an 11-0 Champlain Park run. Josiah Strong passes to Marcus Hill for two more. Hill scores 10 points on the night. Rebels lead by nine. Strong dialed in on the long ball, delivers a three. Champlain Park improves to 20-0 on the season with a 76-62 win. Rex Boys Alpine Ski Team tied for third place Wednesday at the state meet, while West Lutheran's Isaiah Nelson finished third overall. Meanwhile, the state Nordic ski meet is Thursday at Giants Ridge in Bowabek. Local skiers and teams have fared well there recently. This is section meet footage. The Armstrong girls will be looking to defend their state team title after winning the section six meet last week in Bloomington. Section 6 runner-up Hopkins and Section 5 champion Maple Grove are also in the girls' field. The Wyzetta boys were dominant at the section, section 6 meet and they figure to be in the hunt for a state title, as will the Champlain Park boys, the champions of Section 5. Wyzetta's Anders Sonneson and Champlain Park's Ian Ivins could be near the top as individuals. Here's the schedule for Thursday State Meet. The boys 5K freestyle is at 10 a.m. followed by the girls at 11.15. The boys classical is at 2 o'clock and the girls at 3 o'clock. Mike and Alex, back to you. All right, thanks, John. Up next, imagine and create. And we'll show you the best artwork local high school students have to offer when we come back. Finally, some of the best artwork in the entire area can be found right now in Brooklyn Park. The North Hennepin Community College is showcasing artwork of students from a dozen area high schools. You can see everything from paintings and drawings to photography and 3D work. High schools include Brooklyn Center, Champlain Park, Maple Grove, Osseo, Park Center, Cooper and Armstrong. The art will be on display through March 2nd at the college's Fine Arts Gallery and admission is free. <laughs> and you have to remember when you look at that, that, that student work, Those you have to teenagers. remind yourself That's because right. some of it's really good stuff. Good yeah. range. Yeah. That's it for now. Thanks for joining us, everyone. We will see you back here again Thursday starting at 4 o'clock.